Welcome to Greg Can Cook. What tasty morsel are we cooking up today? Well, we have ourselves a delicious computer video card. So stay tuned and find out why I got my computer in an oven. And now I, I know you're asking me why the hell did I put my video card in the oven. Well, reason simple. It was broken. And it came out of this computer right here, which is actually is pretty old, but maybe five, somewhere between five and eight years old. Uh, it's an older Dell XPS, which at the time when I bought it was um, one of the fastest uh, laptops on the market. And um, what happens with these uh, gaming laptops here um, is they overheat a lot. And what happens when they overheat is you get micro fractures in the solder joints of the chips to the uh, PCB. And you'll get either graphical glitches or your computer will just complete quit working all together. And that's what's happening here. By putting it in the oven, what it does is it heats up those solder joints and remelts and seals them. I've had to do it before. Um, and I, the, it lasts... I think it lasted me about a year and a half, um, but you can't get the um, the graphics cards for these laptops anymore because they're so old. And if you do find them, you're going to spend 300 bucks. So um, it's just easier just to do it every time it breaks. Um, I don't really have a huge need for a laptop anymore. I had bought this when I was an EMT to have in the base when there's nothing going on, and with all of our uh, run reports were. Um, were paperless, so they were all done on a computer, and we only had one computer in the base, so this, this allowed me to kind of bypass everybody else and just get my stuff done. Now, you can see here, when we turn it on, you can see our lights are on, well, you can't really see how the lights are on, but our lights are on. but nobody's home. And it's just gonna stay like that. This um, LCD, you, you can't really tell on the camera, but I can tell just by looking at it that it has power, it has that um, not completely dark tint to it, you know, like it's getting power, it's just nothing's coming up on the screen. So what we gotta do is we gotta take this bad boy apart. So um, let me shut it down. Pull the plug and pull the battery. Uh, these strips are here just blocking the uh, the Windows serial numbers. No stealing my operating system. All right, so now I, everything is right underneath this keyboard, so we have to get everything off of here. So to do that, you need your good old you know watch screwdrivers, and all this stuff should pop right off.
Now comes the fun part, because that last... <clears throat> this last wire here, you're not really able to get off, but we don't need to get it off. We just need to be able to lift this up enough to get at these screws right here and to be able to slide that those heat pipes out. So this comes off. This screw right here. And there should be one more. Right here. Now, this whole thing is my video card with my video card heatsink with the two heat pipes. Um, a little further in here, right where this heat pipe ends on top, that's your processor. So now we should be able to pop this whole shebang right out of here. Make sure I'm completely out. Okay. So now. And there we go. You get this out of here. Okay. I found a Torx bit that's big enough. So loosen up these little screws here. And we lift the heat sink right off. And on the bottom here, we take this plate off. All this marshmallow looking goo is um, thermal compound. And we'll take off any kind of strenuous plastic pieces, but keep them together because these are going to be going back on. Okay. Now, and these little spongy things are transfer pads, so those come off too. Alrighty. Now, all this white goo here, we got to get off. You can use just regular um, rubbing alcohol or something along those lines. I have stuff that's uh, specifically meant to take that off because I've built all my PCs that I've had, so that's what I'm going to use. It's kind of orangey, citrusy smelling, some sort of citrus oil, but you'll see it kind of softens that stuff up and takes it right off. Zoom in here. Get it all off the edge, too. And you want it all off these little resistors and everything else, too. So let me do that and uh, show you what it looks like when we're done. Okay, first things first, we want to preheat the oven. Uh, to about 390, 400 degrees. Well, as that's preheating, just take some standard aluminum foil, roll it up into four little balls, 
look at the bottom of your card find a spot where um, nothing is really contacting it like this corner here right in here right in here and right in right in here where there's no chips or anything around there and put the balls in those spots to hold it up off of this baking sheet so I'm going to preheat that to 390 degrees. We'll throw it in the oven, let it bake for about 8 to 10 minutes, and then we'll let it cool off, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, we got our freshly baked video card here. Um, I just wiped everything down, all the surfaces of the chips that are touching any kind of thermal pad or thermal compound. Wipe those off with some... Um, just 91% rubbing alcohol that'll get any oil off of them because um, you want to transfer as much heat as possible through those the way you do that is to use some sort of uh, thermal compound this is uh, uh, arctic silver um, the ceramic 2 compound it, these work uh, very well this kind of sticks things down to there's also arctic silver 5 which works very well on um, uh, processes themselves you could use the Arctic Silver 5 on the actual brain of the chip here and then use the ceramic stuff on the RAM cards and the heats uh, the RAM chips and the um, uh, power chips that have any kind of thermal um, interface which I still have those pads that I'm gonna reuse so there is a gap between the chips themselves and the backing plate here that I'm going to take up with the actual thermal compound. I don't like doing that. Um, I don't like putting it on that thick, but actually that's the way it was originally. Uh, even the first time I took this off, you can see on the top that there are actual thermal pads. On the bottom, for whatever reason, there wasn't. It was just built up with um, thermal compounds. So I'm going to do the same thing. Now you want to try to keep it on those chips as much as possible. If you get a little bit over, it shouldn't really hurt it. This really uh, doesn't conduct electricity that much. Um, so you shouldn't have that much of a problem. When you use squeeze her in there. And you can take just a piece of stiff plastic and just make sure you cover the entire chip there. When you put that plate down, it's going to squish it and flatten it all out. But you just want to make sure that you cover all that, all the chip as best you can. It's never going to be perfect, but just do the best you can. Like I said, the last time I did this, it lasted uh, about a year and a half. If you get stuff that's way off there, you could just take the rubbing alcohol a little bit and uh, just wipe that off again.
and then the heat sink itself. Wipe off the excess thermal compound. And uh, there we go. So we're all back together again. Let me get the laptop up here and we'll put it back in, fire it up, and uh, see if we got a computer back. Okay, so this is pretty much what the inside of your computer looks like, or your laptop. Here are your two cooling fans. This one is your main cooling fan. This is a secondary cooling fan. This is for the GPU only. This is for the CPU and GPU. Um, here's your CPU right here. Uh, underneath this little X cross memory thing, this is one of the other uh, board chips, probably one of the Northbridge, Southbridge, whatever they are. I don't think new computers use those anymore. And... But nice and clean. I blew these out, made sure everything was good to go. I do know that these fans work. Um, and you can see, here's your video card sits right, right into there. And these are the screws. there hold everything down and okay moment of truth give her some power we open her up and pressing these there you go look at that Uh, invalid configuration, blah, 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 blah. That's just because I had an error. I said we pop up with a window screen. Okay, I just wanted to show you real quick um, the way I'm going to prevent this from happening again. I found a program on the internet that will allow me to um, manually control the speed of those fans. What happens with these laptops, um, and a lot with especially like gaming PCs and high-end PCs, is even though built into the... Um, the GPU and, and CPU and the operating system itself is a speed controller for the fans, but they're usually not adequate and usually will only turn the fans on high when the system temperature gets really, really, really high. Um, so even if you have like a gaming PC on uh, like a, a, your desktop, you'll want to manually control your fans or, it, you know, um, program your own um, fan speeds for different temperatures, which is what I do. And I found this program that's compatible with the Dell, which will do basically that. So what I can do is um, here, here, temperature control, Let's zoom in here, is here's my CPU fan. Uh, for different temperatures, I can set it for high or low speed depending on what the actual temperature is. So I have it set for pretty much low temperatures. When the temperature is really low, I'll have it on slow. As it gets higher, I have it go right right to fast. Um, 
So basically, the fans will more than likely be on uh, high almost all the time. It makes a little bit more noise, but hell, if it saves me from having to bake my video card, why not? Um, and you can see here, this it'll is a graph to monitor your um, CPU temp and, and um, everything else as compared to here's your the white line is your CPU load, and the other straighter lines here are your temps. I also have another monitoring program over here in the corner which will tell me my temps here too so I can adjust um, as needed. Now it's it's cold in this room right now as I have the air conditioning on so we're idling around 38 degrees Celsius which isn't too bad um, it's not that great but you know considering that these um, at full load here, we'll probably get in the neighborhood of, you know, 60 to 70 degrees Celsius, maybe even up to 80. Um, that's not too bad. The other, the, this side here, this is Core 0 and Core 1, is a dual core processor, and that's monitoring each core of my processor. You can see that my GPU, even on the no load, is way higher than my CPU. So that's why I was baking the video card on it. So with this improvement with the fans, um, I shouldn't have a problem, and we should be. Um, glitch free at least for a while so hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, computer tech video and uh, close these out here and you know hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll come up with something and we'll make another one